It's nearly impossible to escape the daily onslaught of videos showcasing the latest and greatest top 10 brand new add-ons for Blender on YouTube. And yes, I'm guilty of making those videos too. It's no secret that the Blender community is flooded with an abundance of add-ons and at times it might seem like you can't do anything without them, but that could not be farther from the truth. So stick around because in this video we're going to explore the real power of Blender beyond add-ons. Let's look at 10 inbuilt tools that are better than add-ons. Blender comes with over 20 built-in modifiers and they can be used to make about anything you can think of. They can also be used in combination to make them even more powerful. For example, if you combine the multi-resolution modifier, a cloth modifier, a decimate modifier and the wireframe modifier, you get a cloth like fishing net. This is what most add-ons do, they combine a few modifiers or built-in tools to make something different but under the hood they are just doing things you can do yourself. Blender comes with several ways to make duplicates of any object. This could be just simple duplicates scattered with the hair system or copies attached on other objects. For example, by simply parenting one object to another, you can turn the parent into a Frankenstein of its child objects using the instancing tool. This will turn each vertex of the parent into a copy of the child object. If the parent is unmated, the new copy will also be unmated. You can change the scale of the copies by scaling the original copy and you can even align the rotation of each copy to the nearest vertex or nearest face of the parent. There's so much you can do with the particle system that this video would go on for years if I had to list everything. But to show you this system's underrated power, let's move particles from one shape to another. This can be set up using a simple particle system where the source has a physics type of kid and in its relations setting, you add first the source object, which is the holder of the, of the first particle system, then the target object, which should also have its own particle system, preferably with physics turned to none or voids with a very low air speed to give the particles moving but not far away from the object. When the particles are played, they will move from the original object to the final object and each particle will take position of any particle on the target object. If the target particles are moving, the original particles will track them down until they catch up. Taking up their position, the speed at which they catch up will be the lifetime of the particles you set in the original instancer. So it is recommended that you have an equal amount of particles on the original object and your target object. The Boyd's physics system in the particle system can be used for making flocks of birds and crowds like in this tutorial by Ian Hubert. But let's set up a quick flock of birds just to show you how you can do it yourself. Get an animated bird flying, uh, this one I got from Sketchfab for free, import it in Blender and make four variations of the bird. Offset the animation a bit for each copy so that the animation is not in sync. You might also want to randomize the color of each bud in the materials so that they look a bit different. If you're using the same bud that I downloaded, links are in the description by the way, the bud is going to come in as multiple meshes. Make sure that the entire bud is a single mesh by joining all the pieces that make it up. If you're rendering this in Eevee, the feathers may look a bit weird, so go to the materials and make sure that the blending type is set to clear. Now, add this bud into a collection named buds, add a cube and give it a particle system, set the physics type to voids, set the max air to 100, mid air speed to 0 0.8, air personal space set to 1 or just play around with the numbers to see what you like. For the voids brain, add a goal, separate and flock. For the goal, you can set a moving object as a target so that the buds can follow it and you're set. Now you have a flock of buds chasing an object. You can add a sky and enjoy the birds flying. You're not only limited to flying objects, you can switch off the flying setting and turn on landing and climbing and switch to a bug like model, like cockroaches, to have bugs roaming around on the ground and climbing everywhere. If you want to do motion tracking outside Blender, your options are limited to expensive subscriptions like PS Tracker or free software like Voodoo Tracker, which has not been updated for the last five years. But why would you go outside Blender for motion tracking when Blender has a fully built motion and object tracking system built in? If you have never used it before, you should probably watch a tutorial to get you started. Well, add-ons like Flip Fluids, so fluids and fluid painter are amazing products for generating fluids in Blender. They are simply alternative ways to fluid simulation in Blender. Blender comes with a fully capable fluid system that can be used for anything you can think of. I would only recommend the use of add-ons if you want something fast or working on a client project where you have some extra cash for more quality and convenience.
The cell fracture tool can be used to break objects into small chunks and the rigid body system will apply physics to those chunks. Using this can open up a wide range of VFX shots you can make all inside Blender without ever touching a single add-on. Setting up the physics system is very easy. You just select any object you want as long as it's a mesh and turning on the rigid body system under the physics tab. If you want an object to be an immovable object that still interact with other rigid body system, all you have to do is set its physics type to passive. And if you want the object to be movable, just set it to active. You can do this for multiple objects by just selecting all the objects and going under object, rigid body, active. The rigid body system will use an optimized version of the mesh for the simulation, but if you want a more accurate mesh, you can set the collision shape type from convex hull to mesh. And if your mesh is deforming, for example, if it's a character walking, you need to turn on deforming so that the rigid body is activated on each frame to go with the deforming shape on each frame. Cloth simulation in Blender is one of the most underrated areas of Blender. It can be used for so much, not just waving flags. You can use it to dress up characters, make pillows, beddings, curtains, and more. If you learn how to stitch patterns using sewing, everything else becomes very easy. For example, a pillow is just two subdivided faces with the edge boundaries connected together with sewing and pressure turned on as well. While a curtain is just a subdivided plane with the top that says pinned and animated using a hook object to shrink. When you add a cloth modifier, you can get the curtains. Then there is the smoke and fire system. While this may not be as powerful as Embergen, the built-in smoke simulator is powerful enough for most things. It's quick and easy to use, and if you want something quick, you can even use the search bar to set it up easily by searching quick smoke. This will set up the smoke and the materials, which can sometimes be tricky to set up. Another underrated tool in Blender is the dynamic painting system. It can be used to make simple water ripple simulations, make mud, footsteps, tire markings, and more. You can use it to displace your meshes or even use it to create masks for your shaders or materials. It can be great for creating masks for contact between objects or weight maps as well. It is also easy to set up. All you need is a paint object and a canvas object. This is the undisputed champion of all Blender tools and it's what you pull out for everything else. The learning curve here is a bit steeper than all the other tools, but when you learn it, the sky is the limit. Thank you for watching. I know there are a lot of amazing add-ons out there, but sometimes it's nice to know that you can still do stuff in Blender without using any of them. This was just a quick reminder video to anyone out there who is not yet ready for add-on.